everybody, and welcome back to Mr. Miller's Art Room. Today, we are going to be making a wonderful, beautiful map about our most ideal park in conjunction with the 50th anniversary of the 1974 World's Fair Expo here in Spokane. We will be designing our own park. We're going to be looking for different details that are located in maps, such as a rose compass and possibly even a legend that helps us learn what the different details in the map mean. A rose compass is a circular figure with four points that show north, south, east, and west. And a legend or key is a guide to certain symbols on the map. Here we can see some symbols. This symbol right here might tell us that there are hills or it's a hilly region. As you can see in the map that our two friends here created, we have a border around the map. We also have a, a compass rose located right here that shows us that the north, north is pointing in this direction. And if we want to go south, west, or east, we go in those directions. So that the park right here is actually central or center inside the map. And if we wanted to go east, we would hit the, uh, our friend's home right here. And if we wanted to go west and maybe a little bit north, we find our other friend's treehouse. That's how maps work. You'll also notice that all these different items on the map that shows us where things are, are also labeled so that we know that this is the bakery, this is the library, this is home and that is our friend's house and the map headquarters as well. Labels help us learn what things are. You'll also notice toward the bottom of the map, we have several tools. We have a couple of rulers and a compass, which helps us make circles and something called a French curve, which you don't need to worry about, but I use them all the time when I'm trying to make really beautiful curves. Today, what I'm gonna expect from you is that I want you to think of your ideal park. What would be fun to have in your park? Would you want swings and a slide? Would you want a really cool tunnel? Would you want wood chips for the ground or would you like sand? You could even do something really fantastic like if you wanted to have a castle or a tree house in your park, you could choose to design that and show it in your park map. The other thing that we're going to want to have are lanes and roads that show us where we can go. And I want you to also notice all the different colors utilized in this. These are going to be full color maps like you see in parks. They help us understand where things are and they're also beautiful to look at. Everyone is going to be given a 9 by 18 sheet of paper for our map. Then we're also going to have a bin of tools. In this tool bin, we're going to have two rulers, one circular cup, and I'll come back to this for what we'll need it for, and crayons. First, what we want to do is create a border. We're going to have to do a little bit of work with this because we need to learn how to utilize a ruler. The way that we use a ruler is that we're going to use it not necessarily for measuring, though you can do that. What we really need this ruler, uh, ruler for is for making straight edges. I'm going to choose one dark crayon. This happens to be blue. Yours could be black or purple. I like using those dark colors because they show very well on the map. Then, when I want to make a border, I need to make a border all the way around the map. So what I'm going to do is first take my ruler, and then I need to make an L shape with my fingers. What I'm going to do is then place my first finger and my thumb on the ruler at about the center. I'm going to slide the ruler all the way to the edge of the paper, like so, and I'm going to use the width of the ruler. Now what we need to do is press straight down with our fingers, we're going to take our other hand with the crayon in it. We're going to place it right on the edge, but gently. If we press straight down so that the ruler cannot move, we can lightly guide our hand along the edge of the ruler all the way down like that. 
and we get a straight line. Now, if you miss some marks over there, that's no problem. What I'm going to do is replace it. Get it so that the ruler is right on the edge of the line where I can still see the line and just remark it. Notice my hand is pressed down. I'm pinning it like a wrestler down to the, down to the paper. Now what I need to do is do the same thing over here. But it's going to be difficult if I try to bring the ruler over here, place it down, get it edge to edge, and then pin it, and then try to draw because my hand's going to stop me. Easy solution, just change the angle of the paper. Then I'm going to bring this over here and repeat the process. Now that I've got two of the borders, I need to make borders coming across up the top and at the bottom. If you remember from our book, we have a border, a map border that goes around with this red and white checker pattern all the way around. So we need to make these borders along the longer edges. What I'm going to do is turn my paper. I'm going to take my ruler and go edge to edge just like that so that this edge of the ruler and this edge of the paper match. But we have a problem. You see, the ruler's not long enough. But that's not a problem because as long as we have a straight line, we can still use that straight line to finish it. I'm going to place it edge to edge. And when I'm happy with where it is, I'm going to use my L-shaped fingers, pin the ruler down, take my ruler, guide my, rule, uh, my crayon against the ruler, but not pushing too much in that direction or I'll slide. Then what I'm going to do is move my ruler down so that it can complete the line, L-shaped fingers, pin it down, and guide my finger down like so. Now I need to repeat it on the other side by turning my paper, placing it, taking my crayon, guiding it down. You're just gently guiding it across the edge of the ruler. If I'm happy with where it is, I pin it down with the force of my hands. You can see how my fingers are starting to get a little bit white at the ends. That means I'm really pushing down hard and I bring it across. Now I have my map area. For now, what I could do is take my ruler and place it back in there. And I'm going to do the red and white around the borders. But here's the thing. I don't need to color white because the paper is white. So all I need to do is find a red crayon. I found this magenta red and I'm gonna go ahead and color it in. Since I already have a square here, what I'm gonna do is just repeat squares of red all the way across and around the map. A fine map indeed, Mr. Miller. However, you said something about a compass rose? Yes, Mr. Monocle, that's where this cup is gonna come into play. Every bin has a cup and we're gonna use this as a stencil. The way that we're gonna do that is that we're gonna take our cup and somewhere on the map, usually on one of the corners so you have more room to draw your map, you're going to place the cup down. I'm gonna do the bottom right hand and then I'm gonna choose a dark crayon, like this blue, and I'm going to kinda of use my fingers like I did with the ruler. I'm gonna pin this down so it doesn't move too, uh, too far, and I'm going to trace a circle by gently resting the crayon on the, on the uh, edge of the cup, and I'm gonna go around. Sometimes I have to go around it and then go under my hand, but as long as you can feel the crayon on the edge, you'll wind up with a circle. You can choose a different color and make your compass. Now we need to indicate north, south, west, and east. Inside the circle, I'm gonna write the letter N for n, n, north. Then the letter S, s for south. Then W, 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 w for west. And e, e, e for east. I'm also gonna wanna add some arrows that point in the proper direction. An arrow up and down like this, and an arrow going left and right, or east and west. Excellent, Mr. Miller. Now, what kind of items will you have in your playground? Well, first thing I'm gonna need is an entrance. So what I'm gonna do is draw a road, and I don't want it to be straight lines, because I want people to kind of travel around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a road by making these two curved parallel lines. And then maybe my park entrance will be right here. Then I'm gonna have 
I don't know, I love a swing set. So a swing set can go right here. It doesn't have to look exactly like a swing set. It just needs to be kind of like a symbol of a swing set, which are one V shape, one horizontal rectangle, and then maybe two lines that come down and another rectangle. That looks just like a swing set, Mr. Miller. Thank you very much, Mr. Monocle. Now, the next thing I remember really enjoying as a kid with um, a playground is that I had a tunnel and it was just a pe old piece of like, uh, it was like an old sewer tunnel, but they took a piece of it out and they had it set on the playground and we would crawl through it and over top of it and it was really fun. Then, you know what would be really cool? I really liked having like a really cool fort looking playground. So what I'm gonna have is a fort over here. So the first thing I'm gonna need to do is build a roof by creating a trapezoid, by creating a rhombus, and then a house like this. But I want it high up, so it's gonna be on stilts, like so. And I also need a way to get in there. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna have a door. It's not gonna have like an actual door on it, maybe some windows so we can see through it but we're gonna need a ladder. So what I'm gonna do is draw two lines with some crossbars so we can climb up into the, uh, into the tree house there. When I was a kid, we used sand and I really liked the sand because you could play in the sand and also if you fell in it, it wouldn't be that hard. We use wood chips a lot these days, but I'm gonna have this as the sandy pit and usually around the sandy pit will be, will be grass. So the way I'm gonna indicate some grass is by making these three marks around like so. I think some trees would be a good addition. Thanks, Mr. Monocle, I agree. Maybe we'll have some trees. Now, I don't wanna make it overly complicated. So essentially what I'm gonna do for trees is I'm gonna add this sort of cloud shape, which I'm gonna color green, and then the trunk of a tree like this. And then maybe I have one that's going off the map edge like this. I don't want to draw into the border. I want to stop when I touch the border. But I'll add another tree like this. And maybe there's another tree over here. I think you're missing one thing, Mr. Miller. What's that, Mr. Monocle? A slide. Slides are very fun. Oh, that's a good point, Mr. Monocle. You know what? What I'm going to do for a slide is I'm going to create a diagonal rectangle like this come across over here, and this is gonna be kind of like a rhombus. Then, that way you, went, you could slide into the sand, but we need a way to get up the slide. So what I'm gonna do is then add a ladder that goes up the back of the slide, and then maybe some crossbars to keep us safe. I don't wanna fall off the side. Now, what I have to do is color it. For the sandy part of the park, I'm going to use a peach color. I'm just going to color in all of the sand, but I'm not going to color inside of any of these other shapes. Now I need to color the two other big areas. That's going to be the grass and the trees. I'm going to use two different colors of green. I'm going to use the light yellow green for the grass and the darker green for the leaves. You could reverse that if you wanted. To. Now that I've colored that in, I want you to notice that you can still see the dark crayon marks. That's the benefit of using a dark crayon to draw all of your shapes and your lines before you color, because now we can still see those grass marks. And in using two different color greens, you can definitely see the leaves of the trees. I'm gonna use a light blue in order to color the pathway to the actual sandy part of the park. I'll use this brown in order to color the building of the fort, I think pink would make a really nice, beautiful, bright, colorful roof. I'll use a slightly different brown for the tree trunks. Yellow makes a really good slide color in real life because the light reflects off the yellow and doesn't make the slide so hot. I'm gonna use the same color blue I used on the path so that it kind of gives you the idea that this is made of cement. But you see this tunnel hole? I want that to be a little bit darker. So I'll use a darker blue to color it in to make it look like it's a sort of cavernous area you can crawl into. And finally, I'll use orange to color the swing because I love orange and I didn't get to use it yet. And now you have it, 
the map is all colored and finished. The only other detail you can add if you'd like is you can actually use a very dark crayon and label some of the areas, like the swing, the tunnel, the fort, our path, the slide, and tree. I cannot wait to see what you come up with for your own ideal park. For Mr. Monocle and I, I say good day to you. We said good day!